Welcome, I'm Ellen Annan, and in this series of videos, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of all the fantastic adjustments that are available within Aperture. I think you're going to be impressed when you see all the features that have been added in Aperture 3. One of the first things you may notice is that now you can easily brush on adjustments to localized parts of your images. That's a huge advantage. And you can create multiple bricks of the same type adjustment so that you can apply different changes to specific parts of the image. In addition, not only are there new presets created by Apple to get you started quickly, but whereas in earlier versions of Aperture you could create presets for a specific brick, now you can create presets that encompass adjustments in multiple bricks. You can even opt to apply these presets immediately as you're importing images. That can be a huge time saver as you create a preset that encompasses multiple adjustments that you want to apply to a series of images. That way, with a single click, you might be done adjusting an entire group of images. I'm going to cover in depth each tool that Aperture 3 offers for adjusting your images. Obviously, you won't have to use each tool with every image. But knowing what's available and understanding how to use each tool will mean that you can quickly choose the right adjustment for each image. When you make adjustments in Aperture, they're stored as a series of instructions that get applied when you output the image. You don't have to do anything to make that happen. It happens automatically. Your master file, whether RAW, JPEG, or whatever format, is always protected. You can see the original master without your changes at any time by pressing M or clicking the Show Master icon which is right here. You can opt to work on a new version of the master file if you choose. For example, perhaps you want to create a black and white version as well as a color version or one version that's cropped differently from another. To do so, come up to Photos and choose Duplicate Version or New Version from Master. I'll choose Duplicate Version. And since I had already created a number of different versions, you'll notice that another image is created here and it says version 4 because earlier I had created versions 2 and 3. I do this so often that I like to have the command right there on the user interface. To customize the user interface, come up here to View, Customize Toolbar, and now you can drag anything that you want to be in this toolbar here and anything that you don't want you could drag out. So I'm going to come down and choose new version and put it here and new from master and put it right here. When I'm done I'll click done. Now to create a new version, which is the same as duplicate version, I simply click the icon here, or new from master, and click the icon here. I think that's a little faster and more efficient than having to go all the way up into the menu. In Preferences, there's an option under Advanced to create new versions when making adjustments. I don't recommend that you check that because that will create a new version every time you start making an adjustment and you'll end up with far too many different versions. I think it's better to manually create a new version when you think that you might want it. Aperture has a series of adjustments that are available in the toolbar under the viewer when you're in this view. If you're in full screen mode, those adjustments are going to appear at the top of the interface. While in Aperture 2 I primarily use the split screen mode and sometimes going to the viewer only mode, other people preferred full screen mode. I thought full screen mode was a bit awkward in Aperture 2 and tended not to use it much. But in Aperture 3 it's been improved and now operates more elegantly. For example, I pressed F as you saw a moment ago to enter full screen mode. 
although I could have used the icon at the top of the monitor as well. When I put my mouse over to the side, you can see the film strip browser. If I'd like that film strip browser to stay in place, then I lock it down. And as you saw, the image moved over so that it's now separate and I'm not missing any data. If I unlock that, I can still move it elsewhere if I want. Personally, I tend to prefer it to be over here, and I'll lock it down in place. If you want to see the browser mode, you can click V, and you are back in the browser mode, even though you're in full screen mode as well. Similarly, you can opt to have the toolbar at the top always visible by locking it down if you'd like. And that way you have a lot of your controls and options and tools right there in front of you, which can be handy, I think. But the thing that's really new and nice is the new adjustment HUD behavior. If I press H, I get the inspector. And now the inspector, if I lock it, will lock over on the right side. I want it to be a floating inspector, then I unlock it. That way it blocks part of the image, which I always found distracting. So if I'm going to be in this view, I personally prefer to have it locked in place. That does make the image a little bit smaller, and so it's up to you. Maybe at that point you prefer to hide the browser. That gives you a little bit more space for your image. The point is, that you're able to decide exactly how you want things. Now, one of the nice things is that you're seeing the image against a plain background. And against black, it looks very striking. But as nice and dramatic as it is to see your images against black, that additional contrast can actually make it harder to accurately adjust your images. So if you want to use full screen mode to make your adjustments, I recommend we go back for a second to our regular view, come up to Aperture, Preferences, go to Appearance, and for full screen viewer brightness, I suggest you set it up to about 18%. It may not make your images pop quite so much, but you're likely to adjust them far more accurately. So if you're working in full screen mode, I suggest that you have the background looking like this. Let's get started at how to use all the great new adjustments.